and I am drinking from my professional project bag mug to remind you and me that I am a professional because by the end of this, no one will believe me. <laughs> On the show for you this week, there is a definite theme of unravelling in whips as I have spent most of my time unknitting. I share plans for the upcoming lace salon that I am co-hosting with the lovely Ellen of Mrs Lamb's Yarns. We talk about cows and exciting developments coming up in Instagram and online. And finally we come full circle as I share my opinions about Unravel Festival which I attended last weekend. Hello, how are you? If you are a new viewer, welcome to the podcast. My name's Gemma, I am the hostess of this podcast, the dyer, designer, bag maker and tutor behind the Project Bag and the Project Bag Yarns. Um, returning viewers, welcome back. You've come back for some more nonsense. You won't believe what's been going on with me this week. It's ridiculous. In fact, if I didn't have 22 episodes behind me where there has been actual knitting, you could be forgiven for thinking this is not a knitting podcast at all, or even a vaguely crafty podcast. It's a podcast with all the fails. <sighs> Anyway, I hope you're well. Welcome back. I'm coming to you as always from my little corner of my living room in Kent, where I live with my husband and my two naughty cats, Archie and Kit Nine. So I've said already there's a theme of unravelling going on in this podcast, um, and I am beginning to feel slightly unravelled and completely untethered. So um, we'll, we'll see how this goes. I am using my professional project bag mug with my professional logo to remind you all and me that I am actually a professional because by the end of this I'm really not convinced that you or me would believe I am. Oh right um there's not really any admin apart from oh no wow yes 200 subscribers we hit 200 subscribers over the weekend and I couldn't believe it I got a little kind of thrill I'm a teacher or I was no I was a teacher well I am a teacher I'm a craft teacher but I was a teacher teacher um <laughs> and you're watching this thinking you know goodness help the next generation if you were looking after them mm. uh, <laughs> um and I know what 200 children looks like. I'm not calling you children, but I know what 200 people looks like because, you know, an average year group, you, you'd be looking at 200 to 240 uh, individuals. So it kind of blows my mind a little bit and makes me feel quite fluttery in my tummy and quite nervous to actually be sat here talking to you, knowing that there are that many of you who will be tuning in at some point or another. So... It, we're in this weird position now where we're 23 episodes in. I've been doing this since July, September, October, November, December, January, February, almost March. Okay, I've been doing it for six months, nearly seven months, and I'm now getting stage fright. How ridiculous. <laughs> I am. Um, I had this really weird moment at Unravel as well, actually, where I thought someone was waving to me and I kind of half smiled, but then I really wasn't sure if they were doing the wa waving to me because I'm me or if they were waving to someone behind me and I didn't want to do that awkward thing where you go, hi, and they're like, no, 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 you, me behind you. <laughs> so if you were waving to me, then hi. <laughs> if you weren't, then well, never mind. It doesn't really matter, does it? <laughs> Ugh. So yeah feeling slightly more than a bit unraveled. I'm using my project bag mug. I've already told you that. I've probably told you that twice by now. Um, and I'm treating myself to an actual fluffy coffee with caffeine in it because I feel the need today. I really do feel the need. It's also my first sit down cup of tea of the day. Well, it's my first sit down and my first um, hot drink of the day. I've been saving it to share with you. If you watched last week, no, I have not found my tea that Marcus of Fiberpunk sent to me and I'm getting increasingly cross about that fact because I really want to enjoy my tea. So anyway, we've got caffeine today. Um, we were having an interesting conversation, total segue straight away. We were having an interesting conversation about um, captions and things on um, podcasts because uh, one of my friends Martina has started a new podcast it's in Italian um, but you obviously can use YouTube automatically generated closed captions to help you follow along with 
what Martina is saying. And uh, I said to some, I said to another friend of mine, I said, honestly, don't try. Uh, in fact, no, if you want a giggle, put the automatically generated closed captions on on my podcast because I speak so fast that it comes out with pure gobbledygook. I, I put it on for an experiment to see whether it was worth me trying to do proper closed captions or not. I mean, bearing in mind how rubbish I am at show notes, I actually didn't do any last week in the end. I really don't think that's going to happen, but I put it on just to see and the rubbish it came out with the utter nonsense i mean i suppose it's in keeping with the podcast i guess but yeah i'm gonna have a sip of this then we're gonna get on ha, ha, ha. That, that is far too hot for once i've made the cup and sat straight down to talk to you normally i faff about and do all sorts of things it's like an hour before i actually sit and talk to you by which time my drink is already cold <laughs> a proper adult here proper responsible adult I met a friend's mum at the weekend and it was the first time she'd met me face to face having entrusted her beloved daughter to my care not knowing who I was at all back at Perth. I, I think I managed to come across as fairly sensible and responsible. <laughs> I mean it's a bit late now if not right but yeah yeah it's that thing. Am I par parental approved? Parent approved? I think so. <laughs> no finished objects, not one. Zip, zilch, nothing, nada. Although could you count? I have a hoe, kind of. I mean, it's without heel, but that that is kind of a hoe. This is my Dragon Hill Studio sock. Um, I'm going to have to stop calling it that soon because I'm definitely going to have more Dragon Hill Studio yarns in my life at some point. I know that for a fact because their colourways are just beautiful and they specialise in self-striping and it's just scrummy. Um, this is the pink Dahlia colourway. You probably can't see it is actually, oh no, hang on. Little bits of shimmer, shimmer, shimmer. Um, there's a little bit of uh, silver Stellina in there which makes them sparkly and just that little bit more special. I finished, apart from obviously ends being woven in because this is me, I don't weave in ends, you know this. Apart from the afterthought heel, I am going to wait and finish both sock tube toe things before putting in the afterthought heel. I have watched Amy Florence's um, tutorial on putting in a true afterthought heel and where to cut. I didn't quite understand um, part of it. Um, when she said to cut and actually she's want, she wants you to cut where you would start your heel and she gave me some nifty tips as well so I'll be sharing those when I eventually get to that so I don't repeat myself too much but I asked her on Saturday night I said can I just clarify this and and uh, got got my sock tube out and she showed me exactly where I need to put it and hopefully I have not put the stitch marker in the relevant place so that'll be fun when I come to do that I'll be like Amy help me <laughs> Um, but yeah, I would highly recommend that tutorial. She speaks a lot more slowly than me. She's nice and clear and she's done lots and lots of afterthought heels. So if I can understand it, I reckon anyone can. Which brings me on to whips and the only actual forward knitting that I have done this week. I was going to say living in this bag, but it's not. It's fallen out. Um, kind of living in my project bag, sock size bag, these little diddy ones, which work even if you're using quite long double pointed needles, I found out. Um, so I'm really pleased about that. More on that later. Is my cake of pink dahlia. And this is how it is caked up for you already by Dragon Hill Studios. They cake their self striping. They really take such good care of their customers. <laughs> and also a special mini cake of the hot well not hot pink it's kind of a rich pink oh you can really see the sparkle in there focus please it wants to focus on my sock i'm not going to talk about you yet sock i'm talking about sock later so i'm going to focus on everything but the yarn and they've managed to get it to match exactly which is just incredible the deep pink within this so that is what I did my where's my toe in fact where's my entire tube tubey thing ah it's here which is what I've done my toe in there and as you can see it coordinates absolutely perfectly let's show you the right side Ta -da! 
and I cast on pretty much immediately for the second sock. I wanted some easy knitting to take to unravel. I knew I was going to dinner and so I knew I needed a couple of socks on the go to choose from. So I have cast on and as you can see I have already done one, two, three, four repeats of the stripes. So I have made fairly fairly good progress still a fair way to go but yeah considering I cast these on when I was sat in Perth in the kind of chill out lounge bit in the middle of the vendor hall um, which was a really nice touch actually you didn't have to leave and be elsewhere and other to sit and rest and knit if that's what you wanted there were several seating areas I mean there was a podcaster lounge which was upstairs on the kind of viewing gallery because it's in, it's in the Dewar Centre which is um, like an ice rink and a sports hall so you've got the viewing galleries so the podcast lounge was up there there was also um, just along from there was um, like a cafe restaurant thing so there was loads of seating but there was also seating provided in the kind of main arena itself which was lovely so I was sat there casting on this sock while um, my lovely friends Amy and Ellie were having a race to see who could finish their ball of yarn first I'm, I'm not going to race anyone ever because what would be the point? <laughs> this wouldn't even be a tortoise in a hare situation now, would it? This would just be a tortoise falls asleep or gets distracted and does something else. <laughs> oh dear, I am totally, totally daft. So anyway, I wouldn't hold your breath, but I have made quite good progress. Last week, I promised you a, a tale to tell with regards to my socks. What sock was it? It was my old school sock that I finished that I had as a, a faux for you last time. Uh, and I've got to tell the tale, but basically what happened was on the day in which my mitten turned out to be another left-hand mitten, I already had a left-hand mitten. Um, pop back and watch the last episode. I'm not going into all that again. <laughs> it's worth it for the giggles. Um, on that day, uh, my friend then set me the challenge of completing the second sock at knit night and it was totally doable if I just focused and knit and did nothing but focus and knit and it was fine I was sat there it was about 10 to 5 I was knitting away this is me knitting away yeah one-handed apparently and then my symphony snapped I was gutted I don't know if I'd been too hard on it I don't know what had happened um, but I was left with half the stitches on half of a pointy bit of needle and half the stitches on another bit of pointy needle and I had to race to my local knitting store hop stitch and jumper in the hope that they had something even if it wasn't symphonies but something equivalent circular um, needle that I could use they didn't they had um, double pointed needles bear with me okay so the two they had were either these which are pony and incredibly long and incredibly sharp or they had these little wooden things which make it look like I'd been caught short for a needle and raided the buffet at a 70s party and stolen the cocktail sticks out of the cheese and pineapple which are incredibly short they're too short they are really too long for this for knitting socks I mean certainly for me I'm not used to using double pointed needles I use them for the crowns of hats for crown decreases I can just about handle that but I've never used them for socks before and I basically spent time stabbing myself in the chest and neck and I don't know why I'm demonstrating that to you because all I'm doing is hurting myself but the difference between them is kind of hilarious it's like little and large I was so cross in the end what I did was I took the double pointed completely off and I went to one of my double double ended circular thick circular needles it wasn't really long enough to do magic loop with but I made it work because I could not cope with working on double pointeds, trying to do a lace pattern when I'm not used to working on them and I wanted to go fast and I found myself going incredibly slowly. So, not to be defeated, I needed to cast on another sock because I needed something to work on at Unravel. I wanted the freedom to be able to work either on my vanilla sock or if I had some quiet time on my own, I wanted to get working on the second sock for the my daughter sock which is balanced here that wanted your attention earlier 
because that is now with my tech editor. My test knitters are almost done. Um, it's been through one round of tech test knitting already. Now it's going through a second and my tech editor now has it. So I wanted to get the second sock done so I could start getting um, finished object photos ready for the pattern. So I wanted to have the second sock available as well. And oh my goodness, how my friends on my online knit night didn't get completely fed up with me, I do not know. I was moaning about this. I tried using it at Unravel on the Saturday and I just couldn't get on with them. I gave up, I worked on myself striping Dragon Hill Studio sock. And I, I'm actually part way through a round according to this. I think, oh no, no, I'm not, I finished it, right. But I am now successfully working on double pointed needles thanks to the help from my lovely lovely friends on my online knit night on Saturday or it might have even been Sunday who very patiently helped me learn how to use them. I mean they're all in agreement that they're far too long they're a bit ridiculous but it's, it's what I've got so you've got to work with what you've got right and yeah they suggested first of all that I go down to three so work on a triangle. I couldn't wrap my head around working on a triangle but luckily one of the needles fell out anyway so that was fine I was automatically on a triangle and uh, then eventually I went to the square and I'm working a one by one twisted rib on the square and it's getting a little bit easier it's still painstakingly slow but I am getting there so my review of the pony double pointed needles is they're too long they're too sharp I don't like them um, but I'm sure they'd be great for other projects that you need double pointed needles for. Um, my review of the unbranded wooden cocktail stick ones is they're silly, they're too small, they fall out and they scratch. Don't like them. So <laughs> part of this is probably nothing to do with the tools and a lot to do with me being an absolute moany mini and a total brat about it. But there we are. So I am beginning to make progress on the rib. I've got no idea how it's going to work for when I have to start doing the um, cables and the embroidery stitches. I might just have to bite the bullet and buy some more symphonies because I think, I don't know about you guys, what do you like to knit your socks on? There are so many different ways, aren't there? Um, I think probably you tend to be more comfortable with what you learn on. Um, and this was the consensus in on my knit group as well um, when I was hanging out with them virtually. I was taught to knit socks on the two circulars, which is what you saw here. So 30 stitches, I've lost one. I've just dropped one, hold on. So I don't know, I don't know how well you can see, but 30 stitches are hanging out on one needle and 30 stitches are hanging out on the other. Uh, and that works brilliantly for when you're doing the heel flap and gusset, because obviously you're only working on one side and the rest of the stitches can hang on there until you're ready to start working them again as you're working the, du the dusset gear pieces the gusset decreases so yeah so our hope is that the my daughter sock pattern will be out towards the end of march depending on my lovely tech editor who is taking on despite being incredibly incredibly busy herself um so there's absolutely no pressure i will keep you updated um this pattern this pattern is going to be a paid for pattern and a hundred percent of the proceeds will go to Bliss, the charity for the newborn, um, via my daughter's legacy, Lara's legacy, which is excellent. So watch out for those. Okay, that is it for forward knitting. Um, it's not it for whips. We've got another tale of woe coming up, another tragedy. And if you watch Amy Florence's um, podcast, you will know about the saddlebag scenario. I unwittingly found myself with a very similar situation. Thankfully mine has not needed complete surgery, I can frog it from the bottom up but I will show you my jumper, the drops jumper that I was working on. First of all, good news, I have finished the sleeve, look at that and it looks okay, it's not perfect but it looks okay and it's got this funky striping thing going on in the pattern and I've just finished it off, you know that I was ignoring the pattern so I didn't even bother looking at the pattern. I've just finished it off by doing garter stitch and, please focus, thank you, garter stitch and eyelets there to mimic what's going on here on the collar as well. Um, but you'll notice my jumper has shrunk. I have ripped right back to the armholes. I was encouraged to try 
the jumper on myself when I was hanging out online with some of my knitting friends. Um, it was it was quite funny. So obviously I turned the camera off and then they were doing like full Monty music. <laughs> da, 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 da. While I was um well <laughs> All I've got in my head now is you can keep your head on. Do, 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 do. Totally inappropriate. Come on, Gemma, get a grip. <laughs> and breathe. <laughs> anyway, um, put it on. And I was barely dressed by the end of it because basically it looked like a crop top on me. Um, the sleeve was a good length sorry good width but it wouldn't have been if I'd carried on decreasing as the pattern suggested but oh my goodness it fit like a crop top um I will put here a photo of what the jumper should look like which I happen to have because I sent it to Amy Florence last night um when I was sharing my my tale of woe with her um and you might have seen on my Instagram stories that this picture um, which is what she started talking to me about. She's like, oh my God, no. Um, and then uh, one of my friends at Knit Night said, pop it on again. This is what it actually looks like on. Bear in mind, this is for my grandmother. Yeah, yeah, not loving it. <laughs> it's awful. I mean, in that picture, I was holding my tummy in for dear life and like, yeah it was, wasn't good wasn't good um so I said to Amy I really don't know what to do I shared it with my knit group in the morning and they'd said perhaps to take it back a little way and then in increase the length but I was talking to Amy Florence about it and I was just like I think I might just have to go right back to the arm caves and she said yep straight back rip straight back start again no decreases ignore the saddlebags and yeah Luckily, unlike Amy, who had to cut into her stonewall sweater because it was bottom up, um, I have been able to frog back from the bottom. So it is actually kind of, it's actually kind of upset. Oh, look, I've got like a Mickey Mouse in. <laughs> I can't do it. Can you see the Mickey Mouse laugh? No, I just sound like a lemming. Maybe I'll put this in at the end. But look, I've got a Mickey Mouse of yarn balls there. That is how much I've had to unwind. I'm just so despondent about the whole thing. It was my grandma's birthday three days ago. It was my grandma's birthday on Monday. I'm recording this on Thursday. She is, needless to say, not getting her sweater anytime soon. And next with unknitting, you will remember that I shared last time that I had two left-handed Selby mittens. Um, I... I'm so grateful for your encouragement to say, you can do this, you can do it. I haven't knit a stitch on it. Instead, what I've got is I've got, again, unraveled. I've unraveled right the way down to the cuff. It took me and my husband over an hour to unravel this. And where it's 100% lamb's wool, oh oh it made my ears go funny like you know there's this thing asmr where people get all tingly and they like certain sounds this is the opposite this is nails on a blackboard cotton wool being scrunched just sets your teeth on edge um did you know shakespeare came up with that sets my teeth on edge hmm, oh yeah little little bit of culture for you in amongst all the moaning about the knitting fails <laughs> um but yeah it just sets your teeth on edge and my husband is particularly sensitive to the sound of scratchy yarn and cotton wool and yes yeah, so the pair of us were like going, trying to untangle it because it's not just as simple as unraveling the knitting because it's color work the yarn is wrapped around itself all the way through because you catch your floats um i don't know how well you can see this i've just flipped the cuff down on the other one can you see that they are all interlinked so yeah it was having to untangle all of that as well i was ended i ended up stood on the chair and was like getting arm ache it was oh it was a total mess but i have the cuff done because i didn't rip that far back there will be a pair of Selbu mittens. There will be 
finished objects. Okay, I'm gonna do things slightly differently this week. I'm actually gonna show you what's going into next week's shop update a little bit more. I showed you some of my spring into summer colorways last week. I'm gonna show you the lace weight yarns this week because some of them are dry, I'm ready to show you. I'm so excited. The reason I'm putting this here is because I want to talk about the lace along. Bear with me, one sec. I have with me my lace yarns, aren't they beautiful? This is over 800 meters of um, merino and silk goodness. And I have gone for some very kind of vintagey muted shades. So one of my personal favorites, whoops, is this kind of gold color here. It's the, the goldness, the kind of luster comes from the silk, but it is that, I just, I love it, that kind of antique, shade of gold or cream i think it's absolutely beautiful so I, I love it so much that i dyed two skeins of that okay then i went for this powder blue and it was going to be over dyed with something else to make it kind of dusky but i really liked it as it was it's showing up so much more vibrantly on the screen at the moment let me turn this lamp off and see if that sorts it That's still incredibly vibrant compared to what it actually is. I think that just where we are with studio lights now, um, it is this really muted shade. Um, I just liked it as it was, so I left that one as well. Now, until this morning, this was my personal favourite. It is this beautiful, mauvey, pinky, silvery, dusky, mulberry colour. which is just stunning. I absolutely love it. Am I allowed to say that my own yarn is stunning? Am I allowed to love it that much? <laughs> there is just one skein of this. And then we move into the green. So this is a combination of that kind of gold creamy ochre colour and a pale green. And you can see the combination there is absolutely beautiful as well. And finally, we have a more emeraldy green, which has been over dyed to create this dusky darker patches, um, which again is is really effective overall. I wanted to dye semi solids really for lace because when you're doing such fine lace work, if you have any variation in the colour, you risk the chance of losing the lace. Um, however, some subtle variations I think can look really effective and that's what I've done here. Um, this one is actually a second. I can't, and I will be selling it as a second. There are two like this actually, because I tried to sort it out. I don't know if you can see. Can you just about see, just under my thumb, there is a bright yellow spot. And what happened was for this particular batch of dye that I have, is it separated out into its component parts. And so what's happened with this skein, this particular skein, is every so often you have the tiniest pinprick of bright yellow. I don't honestly believe it will show up particularly when you have knit it. I mean, you can't even see it on there, can you, on the camera? Um, I'm going to offer it as a second because I'm going to keep one for myself <laughs> and I th just think that I really don't think it's going to notice as it as it knits up. I'm not happy to sell it as a, a full 100% this is what I'm happy with skein because I'm not happy with it, not 100%. Um, but yeah, I just thought it might give someone the option of getting their hands on some silk lace weight yarn that they might otherwise not be able to do because obviously Indie Dye yarn is a little bit pricier than commercial yarn because of the work that goes into it, etc. and the process and the fact we're small businesses. So those are the colours I've got at the moment. In the dye pots, there is a, whoa, that was close. That was so nearly my coffee. It wasn't, it wasn't, but it was so close, so close. Um, as you can see, there's kind of a night, as you can see, there's a clear kind of identity here. I have gone for vintagey inspired, muted, dusty shades. In the dye pots at the moment, just cooling off, we have a creamier, lighter version of this. 
and we have um, a pink over dyed to be dusky as well and we have a much richer green which I've over dyed to see if that will absolve the issues with the bright yellow spots anyway I'm gonna put these down somewhere safe somewhere not near my coffee and I'll be right back to talk place along with you Hello, I'm back. The thing is with lace, when you've got it in the skein like that all long, is that it likes to grab onto everything. So there was a hairy moment in the middle there when it got caught around my tripod. I was just, no! <laughs> but it's okay. It's okay. Right, I now want to talk about the lace along, which kicks off tomorrow, Friday the 1st of March 2019. This is all Ellen's fault. It's all Ellen's idea. Um, so it's only fair that Alan that Alan? No, Alan's got nothing to do with this. Ellen. <laughs> Ellen gets dragged into the responsibility of running this thing. So, I mean, yeah, let, let's, let's play, right? So, Ellen is basically a massive enabler, okay? I've worked out that she has led me astray on many things already, and we've only known each other since Perth. In fact, we didn't even really get to talk together that much. We didn't get to know each other that well at Perth. It was only on the very last night when we were all having dinner together um, that we really started chatting. Um, and we, and there were just so many people around and we got talking afterwards and we've been messaging back and forth since. In that short time, she has got me into a surprising amount of mischief. She really has. <laughs> Yes, I'm talking about you, Ellen, because I know she's going to watch this as well. I don't care. You know, I'm just telling it like it is. That's all. Don't say you haven't been warned. Anyway, she had the idea. She asked me if we could do a lace along. I shared that I wanted to learn Estonian lace. I shared this book, Knitted Lace of Estonia, and that I wanted to learn to do lace knitting in 2019, like proper, proper lace knitting. And she said to me, could we have a lace along? So, like, yeah, let me think about it because I already had some ideas hiccups now. I already had some ideas for knit alongs but I thought you know what that could be really lovely for the spring. Okay so we're gonna do it. So it kicks off tomorrow officially so cast on date no sooner than tomorrow. It's going to run until um, September. It will run until after Perth <laughs> um, just because um, I'm going to be traveling up there to go as a visitor or a podcaster or maybe maybe a vendor we'll have to see we'll have to see um so i want to get all that out the way and not have to worry about remembering to post prizes or to tell people they've won or to draw for prizes or any of the rest of it so you're getting a good six and a bit months to do this plenty of time so don't panic if you're not ready to cast on tomorrow if you use my yarn or Ellen's yarn, Ellen is Mrs. Lamb's yarns. She doesn't have lace weight at the moment. Um, I'm launching lace weight. We both have four ply. So if you use either of our four ply yarns or my lace weight yarn, then you get an extra entry into the chance to win a prize. You absolutely do not have to. You can work from stash. I'm going to be working from stash. I'm not buying anything in especially. It doesn't have to be lace weight yarn. Four ply is absolutely fine as well. As I said last time, loads of ways you can enter for prizes. We've got the um, Ravelry group, my Ravelry group. There's a chatter thread if you join in with that. We're going to be pulling from that every couple of months for mini prizes we've agreed. And there's obviously using our yarns gives you another shot and having something in the finished object thread as well, which I will open in probably about June time because I know some people are super super fast and will be jumping at the bit to get their finished objects in there. So that's three ways in which you could win. We are discussing and debating whether or not we want to open it to an Instagram thing as well. We're not sure at the moment. Um, I think that might just be biting off a little bit more than we can chew to be honest with you but we're gonna see. But we would like to invite you cordially to join a cast on party, which we are hosting either on Instagram Live or via Zoom on Monday, the 4th of March. And we're also going to host one on Tuesday, the 5th of March in the afternoon to cast on. And basically, it's not even just casting on for the lace along. It's casting on all the things because... If you remember from last week, I said that I was going to be giving up casting on new things for Lent, which starts on the 6th of March. 
Yeah, all right. You laughed at me last week. You don't... I'll give you a moment to compose yourselves. Finished? <laughs> You're right, it's pretty funny. Um, <laughs> most, most of my friends have just full-on belly laughed at me, snort laughed in some cases. Um, and Ellen said, oh, should we have a cast-on party the night before to get us through? So there we go again, being led down that rabbit hole by Ellen. She looks so sweet and innocent, but no, she's not. <laughs> She's an enabler. <laughs> so that's what we're going to do. We are going to have a cast on party to cast on basically all the things. So if you want to see what we're casting on to get us through Lent, then please do join us on Instagram Live um, on Monday evening and on Tuesday afternoon. And then we will, we will leave them up as lives. You can leave them up for 24 hours, I think. So we'll do that as well to give you a chance to, to watch them. And you can catch up with us and see how many things we can cast on in the space of about three hours. <laughs> I have bought more cables. I ordered them this morning from Amazon and they're gonna be winging their way to me. So that in mind, I just thought I'd share with you what I am planning on casting on for the lace salon. Now, someone was talking to me the other day about how they'd gone back and watched my first episode of the podcast. And I don't know what possessed me to do it. But I went back and had a little look as well. Um, I was particularly looking at the section where I shared about Lara and Trudy Hooks um, and shared that if you haven't seen it it's at one hour 17 minutes it is the remainder of the podcast because i talk about some quite sensitive issues um, but i share about verity dedicating the socks to lara and a little bit about lara's story and i went to it and just before i got to there was a bit about fiber east where i had bought this beautiful um launceston lace alpaca silk cashmere lace weight yarn from dragon hill studios and I shared on that in Fibre East last July that I was going to cast on this shawl. This is called the Julian shawl. It is available on Ravelry, I think. Pretty sure I'll put the link down below if I remember, if I get time. Possibly won't. Who knows? Um, so that's going to be being wound and going to be cast on. Then I want to knit something from this Estonian lace book. I haven't decided exactly what yet, but I will be using a skein of my lace weight yarn. I probably should say there are only 10 skeins of that lace weight yarn available. It's very limited run, nine if I keep one for myself to do this. Um, so if you are in the market for that, they will be in my shop update on the 8th of March, which is next Friday. Time to be confirmed. This book is absolutely beautiful and I saw this book online and bought it and it really hasn't disappointed me. It's beautiful, it's got a stitch dictionary, it's got step-by-step -step instructions. It also has a CD-ROM that I can't use because I don't have a disk drive. <laughs> but to be honest, the rest of it is, is good enough. Uh, let me see if I can find the patterns I'm thinking about. Now, for my first proper lace product project, I'm thinking this would be amazing. It is actually in fingering weight or four ply yarn. And I have so much four ply yarn in stash here that I'm looking at. It's just out of shot, just there. Um, but if I can find two skeins that work well together, I may well do that if I can find two semi-solids that go together. I also really like this shawl that originally featured in Interweave Knits. So that could possibly be cast on. Or I actually have a Pinterest board under my old account, Nursery Knits UK. And on there it has some fine lace shawls which are as my friend would call insanity lace <laughs> um she did a cardigan that became her insanity lace project and it was absolutely beautiful all over lace work um but these shawls are just absolutely stunning i have my beloved first ever hand dyed skein of yarn my juno fiber arts which is alpaca silk and cashmere so the same as the dragon hill studios I have this, which I bought at um, Dart Farm in, or Dartington in Devon at the food festival uh, in the yarn shop that's there. Um, if you can hear scratching, it's just Archie who's decided to come along the back. Hang on a minute. Here we go. What are you doing? You can't go down there. My knitting's down there. You can't fit. There's no room. There's no room for you, you just have to give it up. Come here, beautiful. 
not been on the podcast before, have you? It's your brother that's... That, you've just got a cat butt in the air now, I'm afraid. You can't fit under there. There's no room. He wants to hide under the table that's beside me, but the thing is, there's so much yarn under there. There's no room for him. Come on, beautiful boy. You can come say hi. Ignoring the cat butt. He's also started purring. <laughs> Archie. Come on then. You gonna come say hi? We're off again. He's gone. He can't fit, so he's sulking. <laughs> right, where was I? This much beloved skein, my first ever indie dyed skein of yarn, princely summer 23 pounds, Juno Fibre Arts is no longer dying. Everything I've got that's Juno is 100% precious because you can't get it anymore. I bought this in a yarn shop everything else is stash, um, like Ravelry D stashes that I've used. So yeah, I really, I'm kind of in two minds about even casting it on. So you'll have to come and watch our live and see if I actually do. Now it's not just lace that I'm going to be casting on. I'm going to be casting on as many things as I can to get me through Lent, to hopefully scratch that itch and kill the urge to cast things on for those 40 days and 40 nights. So I was thinking again about my Fibre East from last year's haul. And in fact, this might have been, even been the year before, I think. How shocking is that? This is the year before, goodness me. I bought from the Knitting Goddess this colour wheel of minis. And the idea with this, I bought it with this sock, with, this is a book, not a sock. <laughs> I am absolutely making a mess of this today. I either want to make the after the rain brioche cowl, but with cream rather than grey as the background, or the fractured rainbow brioche cowl, again with cream as the background. I'm thinking maybe just the standard one. So that will use up those, that's being cast on. And also it ticks a major box for me because I want to perfect my brioche in 2019. So that will really give me that chance to do that. Also going to be cast on is this chunky baby sweater. I have three and a half godsons. <laughs> or two Pretty much, yeah. Two of them aren't actually godsons per se, but you know, um, four, four god children that are boys in my life. And I really like this pattern. It's just a hayfield pattern. I have some chunky yarn left over from my um, beginner's knitting course. It is acrylic, it's what I buy for my beginner knitters, but I know that these sweaters will be loved and treasured and will be passed down through the generations and will not end up on landfill um, unless they get too stained, in which case, you know. But I can always take it back and knit cat toys out of it. And then you see, it, the cycle will continue, it will be used. I think I'm probably gonna do this version, the shawl collar version. So I suppose I could do um, a version for my goddaughter as well, couldn't I? Just because it looks like a boy pattern doesn't mean it is a boy pattern. Um, one to two years takes two balls and two to three years takes three balls but I need to check on the yardage on the hayfield one because it may be that there's more yardage in this one so I might be able to get a full sweater out of this for two to three years in which case I can do it for both my godsons and not just my tiny youngest godsons um, but there we are that's being cast on. I am also going to be casting on my weekender again. I cast it on once on Christmas Eve. It was a Christmas Eve cast on. It was for the 16 weeks weekender cal and I was just getting fed up with it. I hadn't touched it. I thought, what's the point? So I pulled it off. Um, and it was it was only basically a snake of the bottom anyway. So um, I am going to cast that back on because I have been challenged. There is a chance I might be going to Edinburgh Yarn Festival and a certain Amy Florence has told me that that's just under a month. That's plenty of time to knit a weekender. She believes in me. <laughs> so of course I'm accepting that challenge because you cannot be challenged by the Queen of Challenges herself, Amy Florence, and not accept it. You know, um, stash das last year, notwithstanding, that was on me for not understanding how many meters were in a kilometer. <laughs> 
So I've got to cast that on, on the off chance that I end up going to Edinburgh Yarn Festival. We shall see. The other thing that is going to be recast on that I had frogged, hence the title of today's show, Frog It, um, is my James C. Brett jumper dress, shown here in that colour. And if I turn it over, it's shown in that colour. Really beautiful, really beautiful cables. That is going to be knit out of this James C. Brett Tweedy Aran that I have had since I bought the pattern about three years ago. Six years ago, maybe. Six years ago, probably. The Weekender, incidentally, is going to be knit out of this beautiful purple Aran from Hayfield Bonus. I'd bought it initially to make jumpers for Christmas for my godchildren. That just never happened. And now I've decided I need to have it and wear it as a Weekender. We are not done yet. I am going to cast on Ellie's Nelly socks. This is also going to be my non-entry because I can't enter for the fan club cow that I am running that has been going for a couple of weeks now and will carry on until again after Perth. Drink. This weekend I'll be winding and scanning my Gryffindor colours for my Gryffindor socks which are going to be Ellie's Nelly socks designed by Skane Deer. And finally, um, but not finally because there are other things I'm casting on as well. Um, I was put looking for inspiration. This jumper I want to knit for my mother-in-law. I really want to knit it for her. I can dye up enough four ply or I have enough four ply stash. I'm sure I'll buy some if need be to knit this jumper for her. Um, it's absolutely beautiful. It'll totally flatter her figure. And it's the reason, this issue is the reason I chose to subscribe to the knitter and I have not been disappointed since. Absolutely lovely. And in fact, if I was to open it up, we also have one another reason that I would quite like to do a lace along. Absolutely beautiful patterns there. That was in answer to what are you going to cast on for yourself? Definitely socks for me, definitely a weekender for me, definitely a jumper dress for me. That question was from Ellen because I said on Instagram, I'm quite short on podcast content. Could I please have some questions? Um, Amy Florence asked me about my biggest knitting fails. I think I'm going to save that for another time because A, she doesn't watch this podcast anyway. She's far too busy. And B, I think I've pretty much touched on some pretty big fails today already as it is. Um, and I have touched on it in other podcasts. However, I may just do a little knit and little one-off video on knitting fails and what I've learned from them over the years. That could be quite a fun mini-sode, potentially. Um, the other question I had was um, when and how I learned to dye and why I learned to dye, um, to dye yarn, to be clear. People apparently keep getting very confused when I say I'm dying all day. <laughs> um, okay, so it's again, it's quite a long story, but I'm gonna try and cut it short. I had I'm not been, I've not kept this a secret in June of 2017 I suffered from exhaustion I was signed off work sick it became long-term sick leave because once I'd hit that wall of exhaustion and broken a mental breakdown quickly followed as well um, anxiety depression agoraphobia all of those things created this big cocktail which meant that I needed a lot of help in order to recover and to be able to get back to work um and I recognise that actually for me, it was a cumulative effect of being 10 years in a high stress job, which I absolutely love. Please don't get me wrong. I love teaching. I loved working with young people. You know, even though sometimes they drove me up the wall. Ultimately, it's an honour and a privilege to work with our young people and to educate the next generation and to be part of their formative years. Um, it's a huge responsibility and something I absolutely loved but I just couldn't do it anymore. I had pretty much broken. Um, it was my intention to go back to work. And when I recovered, I started to recover after a few months. It was ev I had every intention of going back to work, but I discovered I was pregnant and um, it was decided that it was best all round that actually I focused on my family. And that was my decision. I wanted to carve a better life for myself and my daughter and my husband. Um, so, I w wondered what could I use all my various skills for, my teaching skills, my interpersonal skills that enable me to talk to you even though I am so shy in real life. Um, and 
my love of yarn, my love of colour, my love of crafting, what could combine all of those things together. And so the concept of the project bag was born. Plus I'd seen podcasts and I'd seen them from the beginning. I actually went back during my illness and watched them starting. So I saw um, Kristen, who is a woolen vine, starting her first dyeing experiments and, and selling her first yarns. I saw Amy doing it. Um, although I think she'd been going for a little while before the podcast actually started. Nikki had a go at hand dyeing yarn, although she's not turned it into a business herself. And I was encouraged to to just go for it and just do it. Verity started, I think, I think it must be coming up for seven years ago now, um, Truly Hooked, her hand dyed yarn business. And so all around me were these people that had started just giving it a go. And the beauty of yarn spoke to me, it really did. Um, and I know there's been some conflict in the knitting community at the moment where actually we are finally understanding that actually it's not always been the pally warm welcoming environment for everybody that we would like to think it was um i hope that we are working towards it becoming that way for everybody but for me and my perception at that time my experiences of the knitting world and the yarning community was that it was actually very wholesome very fulfilling um and so I mentioned to a friend that I'd like to try it. Uh, this is my friend Myra, who I've named Colourway for, and I've spoken about her before. She actually found some undyed yarn in the PDSA charity shop. Um, bags of 10 skeins of about 50 grams each for something like two pounds a bag. And bless her heart, she bought them. And she bought them and basically gave the lot to me. She kept a couple of skeins for herself um, and we agreed we'd try and die together and it didn't happen during that summer because I was very ill I just wasn't up to it but in the following summer when um, after I'd lost my daughter obviously I was on maternity leave I'd, I'd left my job in the January anyway um, ahead of ahead of having Lara and the idea had been to set up a project bag while I was pregnant and while I was on maternity leave so that I wouldn't need to go back. Um, in the summer holidays, I started dying yarn. I had my first go um, and I will put some photographs in here if I can if I can find them. They weren't fantastic. One of them has stayed. One of them has become grubby goldfish in my current yarn stock. But that's what started me off. And... I thought to myself, I've got to do this. I need to bite the bullet. I still need to build a business. I still need to build a life. Lara's not with me, but I'm not going down that road again with my mental health. Um, and if we do become lucky enough to become parents again in the future, then obviously I want that same quality of life, work-life balance for my family as well. And I know more than ever that stress is so not worth it. Um, and I'm talking extreme stress at this point. Um, yeah, so I went to Chester Wool and I went to Chester Wool to buy undyed yarn with a view to dyeing it. I'd started the podcast beforehand. I'd launched the Etsy shop with my project bags and stitch markers beforehand. And, uh, there is a funny story about this. They were actually closed. I was a year late because I'd looked up Chester Wool open day and Google does this thing where it crosses off the bit that doesn't fit. So I put Chester Wool open day 2018. It crossed out 2018 and gave me the dates 2017. So I rang them up on the Saturday to find out what was going on. I said, actually, it was last year. We're not doing one this year, but come and have a look around, which was amazing. Um, and he showed me around and he made me a lovely cup of tea and let me squish the yarn. And actually, he was very encouraging. He said, you know, you seem like you've got your head together. You know that it's not going to be easy. I think you're going to make it, which was just wonderful. Wonderful to hear because obviously he knows a lot of indie dyers, um, the guy at this mill. Um, and yeah, so that encouraged me. And then what gave me the final push was after I'd met Amy at um, Perth. I have shared this story before. She was stuck for a way to get to Perth from Edinburgh Airport in time for the gym flight night. I was there, I have a car. I said to her, I'll give you a lift and she accepted. So we obviously got chatting and um, I shared with her some of my baby beginner hand dyed yarn efforts because I had the very first incarnation of Peacock on this undyed yarn from the charity shop with me and um, 
because I'd, I'd taken it to show my dad you know, I was staying with him in Scotland and uh, yeah she said it was really nice which was lovely and encouraging of her and very sweet and then on her podcast a couple of weeks later she shared that I die young and my yarn had stayed in the boot of the car untouched because I was too scared it's like a blank piece of paper I was too scared of it going wrong um, but then she denounced it and I thought right there I go, out of the nest. She's giving me a big old kick up the backside. Um, and it's not just Amy, to be fair, either. I was encouraged, and I have been encouraged by some wonderful people in the industry. Verity of Truly Hooked, who I count as a friend, and Hutch, her best friend, she's um, dye candy. Um, both wonderful indie dyers who have been encouraged themselves by other people to take the leap and do it and are now encouraging me and supporting me as well how I learned is mostly honestly by trial and error I bought a craftsy class on dyeing yarn to start me off so I had a rough idea of what I needed to do um, and the rest of it's all been experimentation I have watched some online tutorials about various techniques and things but most of it to be honest, most of what you see is just me playing around, learning, writing everything down. Every tiny detail that I use is written down and then trying to recreate it. Sometimes it goes well, sometimes it doesn't go so well. Um, as I've discovered with the particular dye I was using today, which has split and has gone to bright yellow, which I didn't want. Um, so that's to do with the amount of acid and the amount of heat I used. I need to adjust that. Um, you know, and to be honest with you, my Easter colourways are nothing like what I was going for. What I was going for is actually what Dragon Hill Studio managed to create, which was Easter treats. And it literally looks like mini eggs. It's amazing. That's what I wanted to create. Instead, what I've created is the range that you saw last week with the corals and the kind of turquoise greens, and pinks and yellows, which I love. I am so, so pleased with it. Um, I've obviously written everything down and they have become my spring into summer collection. OK, it's not exactly what I was going for. They're happy accidents, but those have become my colours. And actually quite a few of my yarns started out like that, just playing around and seeing what would happen. And then the ones that I love are the ones that stay. So Aurora Borealis was a complete accident. I was actually going for, and I needed so much more dye than this to get what I wanted. I was actually going for a kind of Halloween-y colour because it was around about that time. I was thinking about doing a Halloween colourway of bright purple and bright teal and jet black, you know. Um, and actually what I got was Aurora Borealis, which I love. And I love dyeing. It takes ages. It's really fiddly. It never comes out exactly the same way because I dye one skein at a time. But it's actually become one of my most popular colourways. And I'm really, really proud of it. So that's in a kind of whistle-stop tour of the why I started dyeing how I started dying and how I've learned. I am still learning. I am very, very much a beginner at this. Um, I would encourage anyone who fancies having a go to just do it, to just have a go. But bear in mind that actually the startup costs are significant, can be significant. Um, the undyed yarn as well can be significant. You need to do your research into dyes and mordants and, and how to do that. If you just want to play around in your kitchen, then there are some great learn to dye kits out there. Um, you can dye with food colouring, you can dye with Kool-Aid, you've got all those options. You could try natural dyes, like dyeing with red onion skins could be fun. All of those sorts of things you can do. So yeah, that's, that's how my... And actually for me, dyeing yarn has really helped me on the days where I'm feeling completely low if I go for a walk and then get the dye pots out I can do a bit better and I can get through the day so hopefully that's answered your question um if you have any more questions there is a got a question thread or an ask me anything thread or something like that thread in, I can't remember which one's mine and which one's on other podcasters um in the Ravelry group and you're more than welcome to ask me questions there um and I will happily answer them either there or on the podcast as and when I get the opportunity so that is it for today it is pitch black I've been talking for what feels like absolutely hours and my coffee has gone completely cold 
and I have got so much yarn to wind for this um, cast on party that we are having on Monday and Tuesday afternoons and actually talking of the lovely Amy of Stranded this is another one that's going to be cast on the birds of a feather shawl I've got two skeins of frostbite and um, that is going to become um, the birds of a feather shawl that I want to knit as well oh and I've also forgot about this there's a double knit jumper that I've just seen which I will put here just seen that our average day I'm thinking about using my double knit yarns that haven't yet sold because I'm retiring that base until um, the autumn um, then I'm thinking about knitting that up as a, a show sample <laughs> for or a shop sample for later in the year so yeah there's lots and lots of casting on that will be happening right that's it that's everything I hope you have a wonderful weekend I hope you have a wonderful crafty time um if you're at unravel then why not flash your purchases go on show me i didn't buy actually talking about unravel i forgot to talk about unravel didn't i ah i am going to do a blog post about unravel for this weekend i had a wonderful time it's a fantastic show um fiber east was the first one i ever went to and i think that will remain my first love and then obviously perth drink but i will quite happily go to unravel every year i thought it was really well laid out it had a great variety of stalls lovely atmosphere lots of space to move i thought it was really really well organized i didn't buy a single thing i bought a pair of higher higher sharp needles which were too sharp and i've now given away but that's it so i have to quote the beautiful wonderful caroline squidged vicariously and purchased vicariously um I was very lucky to see what my knit group bought and also to see what the lovely Caroline and Hannah and Amy and Ellie purchased. And yeah, so if you want to show me your purchases, you can flash those in the Ravelry group if you like or comment down below. But look on the podcast for what I think of Unravel. Spoiler, I'll be going again. <laughs> and with that, it is time for me to ravel up this podcast. I wish you a very happy week and weekend and I will see you very, very soon. Take care.